on my birthday, I want to give gifts. So I read the notes. I had a conversation with the amazing gift that you had here for the last two weeks, and it was my wife. And so I want to give you that gift again right now because there was a page of notes, phenomenal notes. I said, this is a book. You got, you got to put this together. This is a book. This is an outline for a book. And so she has one more page. I want her to finish and download into your heart uh, the gift that she is right now. Do you have your notes? Go get them, honey. Go get them. Okay, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. All right, while we're waiting for the gift to come back. Give one more person you haven't already hugged a hug, and then we can sit back down. Somebody you already haven't hugged, go find somebody. Somebody new, okay? Pretend you're in Uganda with me and find somebody new, okay? <laughs> Gabe, can you help Will? Can you help Will? Amen. 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 Well, I had no idea he was going to do this. And I know you want to hear him, and I know that he's going to come up and just sort of put the frosting on today. So I just want to give you a little bit more foundation. Uh, as we were going over the notes, we were so excited because it was so congruent with what the Lord is doing all over the world. I mean, Uganda, their banner this year is Year of the Breakthrough. And the Lord is speaking to us very specifically about what it takes for a breakthrough. So many times we can thank God, you know, I'm just not getting there. I just keep getting so far and I slide back down. I'm not hitting the mark. I'm, you know, sort of in the zone, but it's not clear and I'm not hitting the bullseye. What is it going to take? So God has been extremely faithful to us over the last couple of months talking about believe and become. And that word believe, I broke down for you last week, and it was a very important word. It says, if you believe, Jesus was referring to us, he said, these works you're going to do and even greater things. And you know, as a Christian, we can really religiousize that and say, well, you know, that was Jesus, and he was just being kind. He didn't really mean it. You know, greater than Jesus, greater than Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God. Yes, he said greater. So what does that mean? The beginning of that scripture said, if you believe, that word believe there was a compound word I gave you, pistius, and the beginning means you have to persuade yourself. In other words, you have to align with the Lord. You have to make the adjustments in your life to align with him. And the second part is being open to letting him persuade your heart with his divine grace, his power. So it's a... It's a compound equation of what's happening here. And so our belief is so important to becoming who God has called us to be. And when you are on that road of momentum, that's when the breakthrough happens. So I didn't get to talk about breakthrough very much, and that's where uh, I left off and, and my husband said, no, you need to really share that. I did share with you that breakthroughs happen suddenly. I shared with you that you need momentum for breakthrough. I shared with you that you don't just go up to uh, a piece of paper. Do you have that banner? I love that banner. I showed him the football banner. Breaking through the paper, like on homecoming, and I said I was a lightweight, so if I did not put my whole self into it, I was not going to get through it. I was going to bounce off of it. You've got to commit. Faith is about committing your whole self. It's about your mind, your will, your emotions, every part of you, your, your, your physical body, your finances, every part of you, you're thrusting into what God has in front of you. That's what faith is. Faith isn't toe dipping. Faith isn't spectating, as Rachel said today, as they led us in worship. See that? Do you know why it's black and white? Because we need a new screen. $2,000 if anybody wants to give toward it. Projector, I'm sorry. We need screens, too. We're going to upgrade screens eventually, too. But we're going to do it all. There we are, breaking through. So God's been making these adjustments in our life. We're letting him make those little adjustments. We're making him make some big shifts in our life. 
aligning us into the direction and the positions that we're called to go because we're connected to other people. And the sobriety is, matter of fact, it says in Scripture that when you get to heaven, there's going to be some tears because there's going to be some things the Lord is going to show us that maybe we didn't do because we just said, you know, I don't feel like it. You know, it's hot out. You know, I I'm going to the beach. I don't care. Now, I'm all for vacations, everybody. Matter of fact, I picked Pastor up from the plane in Boston. It was so hot waiting. His plane was delayed. I drove to the beach, okay? So I'm not against beach. But I go to the beach when I feel the Lord says, go to the beach. See, are we checking in? Are we really gr grabbing hold of being the soldiers that we're called to be? Meaning my assignments are directly connected to my positioning, which is directly connected to all of those things happening so I can bring breakthrough. And each of us have breakthrough to bring where we are. You are strategically positioned in your life. Yes. It's not an accident where you are. Come it's on. not an accident where you go. It was not an accident. He got to speak to 4.5 million people last week. Twice. Twice. And then where is that going to go? And it's not even just about the numbers. It's about the impact one-on-one -on -one that you're making. You could be preaching I shouldn't say that word. Some people get religiousized out. You could be ministering and giving your heart and imparting to someone who is the next Billy Graham. Come on. I mean, this generation that's coming up, I take, I see, you know, when sometimes I, I go to my uh, children's homes and the kids, it's like, it's like happy circus. It's like, it's like, uh, Holy Ghost chaos. It's like, woo! I just have to remember, these are prophets of the Lord we're rising up. These are prophets of the Lord we're training up. And we have to just get them in their lanes. We have to help them with their blinders. We have to get them hooked in, and we have to show them where to, where to go, and then we release them. Okay? So that's why you have very important jobs. I mean, my goodness, the Long Acres can be raising five prophets of the Lord that are frontliners for this generation to receive Christ and come into the fullness of their destinies. So when you get tired and you get weary, you got to think about who you are and who you have in your midst that you're responsible for. Amen? And that's where the breakthrough is. Wow, that's awesome. So I took you to Luke chapter 5 because... The Lord specifically was talking to us about you could be one step away from your breakthrough. One. So you think of the area where it may not feel like a piece of paper you have to break through, but maybe a brick wall. But you may have moved 99 of those 100 bricks before the wall falls down. You don't know that if you quit. You have got to keep pursuing. It is about being relentless. It is about not letting go. It is about fighting the good fight. It is about letting go of the things that hold you back and entangle you. We have to move forward. So Peter, we know, he's out there fishing, the book of Luke, chapter 5, and God says, just, Jesus said, hey, just one more time, let down that net. Mm, yes. And out of obedience, he did it again. And we know the result. The result was that great was the harvest of fish to the point the nets broke. So many fish, so much provision, so much abundance. Now, the reason to me that's a very important scripture, and I, I shared with Pastor in the book of uh, Revelation, also, I mean John 21, it also brings that story back when Jesus had come back to the earth. When he was resurrected, from the dead, hundreds of people had seen him. One of the encounters he had was bringing to remembrance this story. That's not an accident, everybody. There's something that the Lord wants us to get about just one more time, an act of obedience, one more time. When you think you can't do it, when you think you can't press through, just do it one more time and see what the Lord does with that. Secondly, God's equation for breakthrough is going to include a unity of the generations. Amen. It's going to take all three, everybody. This is the first time, as far as I know, we can all do it together. We've got three strong generations on the earth simultaneously. We don't have, uh, you know, in the past, even up to 100, 150 years ago, people that were our age didn't live very long or didn't even live to my age. They only lived to maybe their 
40s, 50s because of the diseases. We live in a day and an age where people live to 100, live over 100. As a matter of fact, I minister at Christina's house and one of the girls brings someone there who is 100. And he's, he's awesome. And what's really cool is he was in the service at one time and he tells me his name and he spells his name and he says, so just tell me what to do. I need to know what to do. And I said, I'm going to tell you what to do. <laughs> Every time I go, it's great. So we can live up to 100, which means there's generations behind us. But guess what? They're not going to know the way to go if we're not training them, if we're not drawing them in, if we're setting them to the side, if they're just a nuisance, if we don't want to be bothered because I want to go just be still and I just want to be with the Lord. You know what? There's times to be still and be with the Lord, but there's times to get in the thick of it with people around you and get in the trenches with them. Amen? And that's more of the time. Because the continuity of your relationship with the Lord and hearing Him is going to send you into those trenches every day. That's what spending time with the Lord is all about. When I spend time with the Lord, He gives me pictures, pictures of some of you. You're supposed to call them. You're supposed to encourage them. You're supposed to be praying for them. 3.39 this morning, He got me out of bed to pray for some people. See, it's about are we willing to be a part of the equation for the breakthrough that God wants to happen on this earth? One, two, three generations, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all together working, and every generation has something powerful to offer. The Lord is moving us into a place where breakthroughs are called to happen like this, and I'm telling you that to prepare you. Things are going to happen fast. So for those of you who like to move a little bit slower, I'm planting a seed in your heart right now. I'm going to keep watering it. God is going to do some things that are going to pick up the pace. The momentum is going to increase. It's going to be like a freight train. And when a freight train starts to come down the, the track, not the road, I hope, <laughs> there's nothing that's going to stop it. Amen? That's how the body of Christ is called to be on this earth. That's when we bring heaven to earth. That's when the presence of Jesus is seen all around and people can't help but want that. They're hungry for it. They want their lives changed. Some of you in here are movers and shakers like God is just wanting to light your fire. Just light the wick and have you go. Is that what you call it? What is the thing on the end of a bomb? Those little grenades. Oh, whatever it is, God's here to light you up. Because you are the light of the world, so stop hiding your light under a bushel basket. We're not called to be that. You're called to be salt. You're called to be light. That means you're a little bit different. That means people kind of ponder who you are. That means you leave an impression. You leave an impact. That means they want to know more. That means they're hungry for truth. That means they know where to get truth. Do you ever notice there's some people in your life that only come around when they're in a crisis or they need prayer? They know who to call, don't they? And the truth of the matter is that's awesome. That's an awesome testimony that when something bad happens, they go, we got to call so-and-so. We got to call Lifestream Church. Boom, we know there's going to be another testimony. I've been sharing with you the testimonies. We have a board in the wall over there uh, with all the thank you notes people send. Matter of fact, I got to take them off. There's so many, I got to take them off because more are coming all the time. That is awesome. That's an awesome legacy for you to have. But the Lord says there's so much more. There's so much more if you would just agree with me, if you would just believe me, if you would just believe that you'll do greater works than I did on this earth. Why? I believe part of that is because he only operated in that optimum, tremendous anointing for three and a half years. A lot of us are here a lot longer. Here's another reason, social media. You can put something on that can change lives in 60 seconds, it goes around the globe. Amen? Amen? There are things you can do that were not on the earth when Jesus was. But we have that opportunity, we have that privilege, so what are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? Are we being good stewards with the gift that God has given us, the talents that he's given us, the finances he's given us, the strength he's given us? Maybe there's a neighbor who needs an air conditioner put in. Maybe there's a neighbor who needs a, a, a rake picked up. Wow, would that impact their life? I mean, lately, more than ever before, I'm hearing story after story of people whose lives are impacted by very little. You know why? 
because the world just doesn't care or the world just ignores the needs that are out there. So when someone stops to write a note or someone stops to bake a loaf of bread or someone stops to say, can I pray for you? Wow, our hearts impacted. Lives are changed and they want that. They want more of that. And that's our position. Those are part of our assignments. And as you do it more, and you do it more, and you do it more, you accelerate the movement. And the momentum is there. And it's the big mo the pastor talks about. And you can hear it in the spirit. Just like in worship today, you can hear it. You can hear it. You can hear it. That's who we're called to be. That's what we're called to do. That's where God is pointing us. So be not afraid and expect things to increase. Expect momentum change. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, Matt, you're going to like this. Ready? 21. Today's 21. We were born on 21. When two become one. New power, new acceleration, new advancement. Timothy warned everybody when I was coming to Uganda. He says, the fire is coming. Picture I saw today was when I felt the Lord said concerning my wife, let her build the fire and you'll light it. So what does that mean? It means I need to pray right now. Father, you're stunning. Your words are dynamic, spirit and life. Nobody is as kind and generous as you unless we grow up and be like you, Father. What else, what are the words that you have for your people today that came drawn here by your spirit, Father? Okay, I got it. If there's anybody that feels stuck and wants prayer, that you want whatever adjustment, alignment for the assignment, the advancement, the acceleration, but you feel stuck, you feel like you don't have some clarity that you need, I want you to come to the front right now for prayer whoever that is. Dan and Lisa, I want you to come up. Honey, I want you to come up. What I'm judging in my heart right now is, is there supposed to be music or not? Because the traditional thing is, is to start playing music. There's something that the Lord wants to communicate right now by his spirit to you. And I'm holding off on, uh, I'm just hold for a moment. A, a, a big, big, massive heartbeat of what is inside of us as a leadership team and as a ministry is helping people hear and sense for themselves what the creator that made you is saying to you. Scripture says it's the sons of God that are led by the Spirit of God. Jesus said that the traditions of men stop the power of God. 
and it is just so easy. Honey, please come up on the stage with me. It is just so easy, Christian or not Christian, just to get in a rut, just to get in a, a, uh, a flow and, and, not, and not be aware of what the Holy Spirit is saying. And, you know, we're just, oh, we have to go to work and we have to do this and, and we have to do this and we have to do this. And, and the Holy Spirit is tugging on us. No, you, you, got, you, got, you, you, you got to stop and, and talk to that person right now. This, this is important right now. This could make the difference in their life right now. Stop and talk to them. Do what I'm telling you, this little thing. Do not despise the little. That small, still voice that, that so desires everything. <laughs> said it you got over and over. Everything that God has written in his word, every instruction, every tug on your heart is for your benefit. Everything he asked you to do, any act of giving, is so that you can reap something from the seed that you're planting. Whatever it is, a hug, an act of kindness, finest, whatever it is, everything that the Spirit of God pulls on our heart to do is for your benefit. It's for your benefit. It's so you can get to heaven and he can say, Mary, I'm so proud of you. My daughter, you well done. And then, he, and then he says, here's the rewards for your faithfulness. Some of those rewards are, are we get to taste them on earth. But some of those rewards aren't going to be until we run the race like Apostle Paul and we've been faithful and we ended strong and we didn't quit and we didn't give up. But we endured hardship like a, a good soldier. And we persevered. And we punched through. And we went to the next step. And then we hit the riser. And then we went to the next step. And we hit the riser. And we went to the next step. And we grew. And we got stronger in him. And we know him more. And <laughs> you get to the point. <laughs> my birthday and I said to God I said if I have your presence I have everything and I said I'm sorry that it took me so long to get to this place because he is the source of everything everything no matter where I go there's three things that people want I don't care what color they are I don't care what how they speak I don't care if they understand me or I understand them which we had a real difficult time <laughs> Everybody wants love, they want joy, they want peace. They want water, they want food. Everybody's the same. Everybody wants to be valued. It's just, I don't care their age, I don't care anything. It's just the same. Ah! The kindness of God blows me away. Father. Okay, now I need music. Where's Noah? So important to just live in a live in a conversation with the God that lives inside of you. Live, live in a conversation of the God that lives inside of you called the Holy Spirit, the one that's set apart, the one that knows the best plan for you, the one that's life, the one that is life-giving, the one that wants to give you life and lead you into life and help you be a life-giving person. He's alive. And when you say yes to Jesus, and when you say Holy Spirit, I want the gift of the Holy Spirit, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger inside of you. And the things that we would just we would, would annoy us or irritate us or frustrate us, they just fall to the side. Things that just used to crush us, they just don't matter anymore. There's an arising up and out of the dirt of life. And we start blossoming and producing fruit that nothing else. I 
said to her in one of the sessions I was in, and I said, there is nothing, there is nothing better than having life inside and being able to reach out and pull up other people and pull up other people and pull up other people and pull up other people. Pull up other people up and out. Pull up other people to be used by the Spirit of God. To pull up people. There's nothing more satisfying than being a life-giving person and having an impact in someone's life. There's nothing better. The thing is, we can do it every day. If our focus is on my passion is giving, not getting, our whole, your whole world would change. So what is it, Lord? It's birthday. Lord, give them, give them my gifts. Give them gifts. It's my birthday. I want you to give them gifts right now. By your spirit, I want you to give them gifts. As we pause here to hear you, I ask that you give Casey and Matt and Sarah and Ben and Ellie and Chris and Chuck, and Judy, and Anna, everyone that's here, Father, I don't want the gifts I've already had, the biggest gift, and that's you, it's your presence. I want you to give them the gifts. I want to celebrate my birthday by you, Father, giving them gifts right now. Revelation, healing, deliverance, eyes to see, anything and everything that they need father to be convinced to be able to believe like they've never believed and become like they've never become walk like they've never walked and be like they've never been i'm asking for that right now father there's anybody here that needs some kind of deliverance from a tormenting spirit I just ask right now whoever it is who oh, whoever it is how many I don't care about whoever it is I just ask for a new freedom you told me when I went to Uganda that I was on a freedom tour that people are gonna get set free so I ask that because I sold that in Uganda, you would give it to my friends and family here in the USA, in my own congregation. A new freedom, Father, whatever area it is, spirit, soul, physical, financial, relational, whatever it is, Father, I'm asking for every chain to be snapped, every chain to be broken. Father, that the fire of your spirit, the consuming fire of who you are that delivers us and sets us free and takes us higher would come right now as the prophet of old, of old established an offering and your fire came down and proved your amazingness. I ask for that right now. However you want to do it, Father, ministers that are with me, whatever's in your heart, Father, the consuming fire of your love. Matt, if you want to sing on the keyboard, you can sing. Whoever has something can just be a part of this ministry. This is a team atmosphere. I'm just a catalyst right now. This is a team atmosphere. This isn't a one-man show. It's even you. You're part of the team who's ever here to receive. You're part of the team. You're part of the receiving team. There's a kickoff team and there's a receiving team. <laughs> 